Hi there, this is Susan Caravetto with 5 Minutes for Mom.com, and I am thrilled to be joined today with Angela England for this Work at Home Mom Strategy Hour. So, what we're doing today is part of a series we call Work at Home Strategy Hours. And you can find more out more about those on 5 Minutes for Mom.com. Uh, we have a hashtag of WOM Strategy, Work at Home Strategy. You can search on that as well. And we're going to be talking to Angela today because Angela is a published, a successful published author as well as a blogger and a work at home mom. Angela has successfully written public and published books in both the traditional media and in self publishing. She, a few years ago, wrote a book called 30 Days to Publish something. I may mean, not have the title exactly right here, Angela. What's the exact title? 30 Days to Publishing. Your make make and sell a fabulous ebook. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that was what you'd published three years ago, and now you've revamped all of that and turned this into a phenomenal course, a totally guided course to take you from zero to a published and written and published and successful book. Now. I have had the chance to take a quick look at her program, and I'm blown away, just blown away. So I'm, Angela's going to share a whole bunch of her secrets today in here. You're going to get a lot of actionable, really hands-on information here from Angela during this hour. And then you can check out her course after. But we're going to get a lot of actual meat here out of Angela's brain. So Angela, welcome. To you. I've just given you a whole big long intro, but give us a quick little introduction to yourself. Sure. Um, so my name is Angela England, and um, I started online writing and working from home when my second child was born, and it became very clear that I couldn't maintain my current job as a massage therapist and pay enough to the daycare worker, you know, charge enough in my hour sessions to cover the daycare costs. It just wasn't adding up for me. So I needed to find something else to do, and I turned to writing. And as I developed that writing career, I started with um, ebooks way back in the day before Kindle was even a thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was publishing ebooks before Kindle was around. So I like to say that I beat Amazon to the ebook game. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then now, you know, from there I kind of skipped that middle step and I jumped straight into print books. And so I did two print books in the last year, um, basically in 18 months. And then I I published a self-published book as well because I wanted something that was more specifically branded to my website and my style. Mm -hmm. And I was able to produce it a lot faster. One of the cool things about self-publishing, I turned in the manuscript for my second print book. And then I wrote, produced, launched, and sold my first thousand copies of the Getting Prepared Guide before my second print book ever even hit the bookshelves. So that it, it was like that phenomenal. <laughs> It was, you know, during that time between when you turn in the writing and when you actually get the book as a published author, that feels like wasted time. Um, and, and I figured out how to, you know, I can write very quickly. So I was able to produce that book very quickly and get it out into the world. And, you know, I, I have uh, great reviews and great responses on it. I sold my first thousand copies within four months. Um, launched in March and sold a thousand copies in July. That is so phenomenal. And I love what you're saying about that when you can take the initiative yourself and you're not held back by a publishing house's delays and all that, you just get to market right away. And these days, that speed to market is so much more important than ever, especially if you're writing a book that, and many of us are wanting to write books that have some sort of technical content or some kind of relevant to the social media world or just mm -hmm. basically almost anything that's relevant today is changing so fast that you yeah. got to get it out the door. One of the things that I think was really key and I've seen other authors do this as well. Tim Grawl is a friend of mine and an excellent example of somebody who's done this. When you own the book and you're able to make the creative decisions, you can link that back to your main website where your book yes. lives or your main blog. And he had a really great example in his book because he would say, you know, oh, develop your email newsletter and I'm not going to tell you which system to use because they change all the time. So visit my blog at, you know, timgrawl.com slash newsletter. And I don't think that that was the exact, it was the title of his book, not his name. Mm -hmm. But he gave the link 
to a page on his blog that he could constantly update and refresh. So it came across like a reader service, right? He's doing his readers a service by always having the freshest, most relevant data on his site. But at the same time, he's taking casual book readers who maybe found him through Amazon or through a link on someone else's website, and now he's bringing them back to his own website and developing a more personal connection with them. Now, they're not just reading his book on their e-reader, they're connecting with him on his own property. Exactly, and that is such an important technique. I'm so glad you brought that up right from the get-go because I really want people to hear this right away is that power of using your ebook not in a spammy way to bring traffic back to your website, not that you're like, haha, I'm going to trick my readers <laughs> into giving me traffic, not at all. Everything, almost everything in life can be set up as win-win. You know, I'm right. so passionate about the win-win in life. And that's a, the perfect example of providing a legitimate, a valuable, valuable reason for the reader to visit your website. And I've seen it done and heard other speakers talk about another way is um, to create videos that are maybe going a little bit more detailed into a certain aspect. It could be a how-to sort of demonstration video. You can do that type of thing and put that on your on in your blog and reference back to that. Or it could be um, other interviews that you're doing with other relevant experts. Right. And that kind of video content is very valuable to readers and is, a, again, a very obviously truly legitimate reason to drive them back and for them to pick up their computer and hit click through and, and go to your site. So that's a very, and you, you don't have that flexibility in a published book the same way you do in when you're self-publishing as well, right? The authors that I know who have done it with traditional print books have usually had to fight for it and not all of them have been able to do it the way that they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, one of the benefits, and, and I was very grateful for the opportunity that I had to do the traditional print, um, but what I'm finding from authors is even since when I signed my contract at, in January of 2012 to what people are seeing in book contracts the last six months, they have drastically declined. And these are mm -hmm. authors who have written 10 or 20 titles. I mean, these are, <laughs> these are hardcore writers who know what they're doing. These are professional authors, and they're seeing um, – one half or one third of the advances that they saw in the past or they're getting contracts that have zero advances and they're purely work for hire pieces with no royalty um, built in or they're seeing like no advances and royalties that don't even match what they were getting when they had advances. It's really been um, startling the last six months and you know I turned down doing a third print book um, in order to pursue self-publishing. I have four authors under contract producing books for me right now and I, I'm working on um, a book about edible landscaping right now. So in addition to the course, which of course, um, you know, one of the things that was really important to me was helping guide people through the technology that's changing so rapidly. There's so many more opportunities available now than even when I first published 30 Days to Make and Sell the Fabulous eBook. That was a great tool and it's still a great workbook for somebody who, you know, wants to piece it together on their own or, you know, whatever. But now <laughs> there's audiobooks, there's print on demand, Create Space exists now and is awesome. Um, there's a similar program with audiobooks where it doesn't even require cash up front to produce an audiobook. You can um, give part of your royalties and have narrators, professional narrators, bid on the opportunity to work with you on your book. I mean, it's mm. astonishing the opportunities that are available now. If you know where to look and you know how to present your book in a way that is going to be perceived as professional quality. You know, I went on air in December, and this is one of the lessons that I actually teach in the course is how to get these, like, local news segments and do uh, a little bit of media training and that kind of thing. And I went on air in December, and I was doing a segment on gifts for grown-ups. And so I brought my books, and I brought my print book, Backyard Farming, and I brought my self-published book, Getting Prepared. And when I brought them in, one of the reporters was a newer gal that we had not connected with previously. And she said, now, which one is the self-published book? She couldn't tell the difference. I had to tell her which one was which. And that is 
the key to me. If you're going to self-publish, you have to realize that you are becoming the publishing house. That means you're making the creative decisions on things like cover and formatting and the quality of the writing and who's going to edit your book. You have to make those decisions because you don't have the publishing house making those decisions for you. And you want people to say, well, this is a this looks just like a real book. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because it is a real mm -hmm. book. I worked really you hard to realize that you are to make it a real book. Exactly. And that I, I love that you pointed out there a couple of key issues with because you're self publishing, A, it doesn't mean that you get out of the responsibility of creating the highest quality content. And B the the I believe that really as we're moving forward and authors who have published traditionally are now choosing to publish in a self published in the self published format that it's lost the stigma of oh that's just self published do you know what I mean right. or it's really losing that like people are becoming more aware of the reasons authors are choosing to self publish so they don't. Right. And and I mean maybe some people might still be like snooty about oh that's self published but they and I mean it's definitely and there's different industries obviously I mean the children's book market industry I mean that's I think still a bit different and that kind of literature in that way or you know maybe if you're publishing a novel and that, and that type of stuff I don't really know I I assume it maybe is a little bit different in that space but we're talking a lot more in about the sort of nonfiction space. And I think that's right. really, really changing. Do you think? Do you agree that there's probably a difference between the nonfiction space and the fiction space for um, public self-publishing? Where I see the biggest difference, and where traditional publishing houses still have the advantage, are with super general titles. If your title is um, really kind of generic, then you aren't going to necessarily stand out in the online space. You're not going to be as you know, you're not going to be getting connected with your audience the same way that a publishing house has the connections to put your book on the shelf in front of eyeballs. The mm -hmm. other area where a traditional publishing house um, excels is with still the price point on full color books. So like you were saying with the kids books, if you're a photographer and you're trying to produce this coffee table book, your price point on producing that is not going to be <laughs> cheap. It's going to yeah. be in the twenty dollar per title range at your cost yes. to put that on demand. So that's where people have to be aware of the limitations that print on demand still has. Now I will say this: if your book topic and your platform is such that you're connecting directly with your readers, either they're finding you when you know they jump on Amazon and they're searching these topics, or they know you already then you don't need the traditional publishing house to put that book on the shelf in front of unknown eyeballs because you're getting the word out in front of people that you already know or friends of friends and that kind of thing. Exactly. Um, and that's what happened with Getting Prepared and really took off and, and has done very well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's really great. We have a couple of questions here from the audience. So yes. Marie would, is asking, Marie says, I've already written a book and I'd like to publish it but not sure if I can afford something like that. Aren't the, there companies out there that would pay for my book to be published? Now, and I'm not exactly sure which she's referring to when she says afford something like that exactly. Um, but what, what would your response to be her, to someone like that where they've, already, they've written a book, they want to publish it, but not, maybe you could explain a little bit about the, the process that when you're self-publishing, Nowadays, it's not the same way as it used to be, where right. you had to self-publish and fill your garage with, te you know, with <laughs> books. This is a more right. on-demand situation. Maybe you can talk a bit more about that. Right. So there are some costs associated with self-publishing because, again, you're taking on things like the editing, the cover design. If you're not a graphic designer, then obviously you want to hire somebody who is. Um, and trust me on this, I made my first ebook cover in paint, and I did it myself. And it was so terrible. <laughs> this was like in 2007. It was so bad that when I brought my graphic designer into the course and had her teach a, a expert presentation, advanced training on cover design, she did 10 mistakes uh, in cover design and how to avoid them. My cover that I had made was two of the bad examples. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's worth hiring a professional if you are not one. I have not made that mistake since. but. Um, 
you know, the cover design costs money. The and editing, so what the, kind of the price formatting. range? Sorry to interrupt. What kind of a price okay. range? And that's a very good point. I absolutely agree that people need to make that little bit of an investment to get a cover design because what's the whole saying? You can't judge a book by this cover, but everybody does. Everybody does. So that's right. what price range are you talking about? And how do you find those those people to do it? Well, um, I do recommend Becky Bain, and um, she is my graphic designer. If you're a student of the course, she actually gives you, a, I think it's 20 or 25% discount on your cover design if you go through her. It can range in price a lot, anywhere from about $100 to $500, depending on the complexity and if she's doing, um, uh, if they're doing like web graphics for you also. So if you have them doing the custom banner ad sizes that, Go along with your book. If you're doing only an ebook, the price is going to be less because it's not as complex of a design. With a print book, where they're going to be printing that out, it needs to be a higher resolution image. It needs to be a um, different size, and it, it's a full like the the covers are submitted with the front, spine, and back all laid out as one element. Whereas with an ebook, you just have that front piece and it's just the cover, you know, and it can be a 72 DPI resolution. So the stock images, um, if you're not using your own photographs, then the stock images are cheaper for, you know, at her cost to, to buy. Um, and things like fonts, you have to make sure that you have a font that's licensed for commercial use. You can't just use any old free font because if that font is not licensed for commercial use and you're selling the book, that's actually technically illegal. So there's all of those kinds of things that I rely on my graphic designer to know and understand. She also produces, like if I need a header for my website or sidebar ads, I just have her make all of those marketing elements at the same time, print brochures or postcards or anything like that. Um, the other thing that I think um, is worth talking about in terms of cost is having an editor. Now for publishing, actually getting your book produced Create Space is a great option because it doesn't cost money up front. You're not having to buy a thousand copies of your book, have them all printed in one bulk batch and stick them in your shed. I mean, if I had a thousand copies of Getting Prepared sitting in my garage, I would be petrified that my kids would like kill them before I had a chance to sell them and I would just be out all that money. Never mind the fact I never make it to the, I have five kids, I never make it to the mailbox or you, like the post office to mail those things. Oh, yeah. Amazon, Amazon handles all of that for me. So when someone orders my book, they print it, they ship it, they send it and then they, they credit my account with my amount of the money. And royalties are between 30 and 70 percent after the cost of the book depending on your price point and where it sells. So if it sells to an international market, so if it sells like on Amazon, Amazon it's a higher Amazon. Amazon. Sorry, if you on. that's okay. If you um is it, if it's being sold through Amazon itself where they're fulfilling the order in house, then you get a higher royalty if, if it you know I mean there's all kinds of things. If they sell it through a Barnes and Noble's website, um they have that agreement with them and they're going to take their cut, so you're going to get less on your end. Um, in terms of companies that pay for a book to be published, with um, the Untrained Housewife Guides, I'm producing those books myself, so I'm taking all of the overhead costs onto me. My authors are just writing the books, and for that, I'm taking a percentage of their royalties, or I'm offering a very small amount up front. I mean, it's, it's like $300. It's not a lot of money. Um, most of them are choosing to do the royalties. I did have one gal who was sending her son to summer camp, and so she, she chose the upfront option. Um, but it's what I could afford, you know, at the time. And, um, you know, then I produced the books myself so that all, all of the risk and potential downfall falls on me. So I have to believe in my author and I have to believe in the book and what, what's going to happen with it. But, um, you know, that's a really rare... I, like I said, I only have four authors that I'm working with right now. Most of the time when I'm working with a client, I'm helping them produce their own book and they own it. They're doing it themselves. So. Excellent, excellent. Um, yeah, well, so that website that you're referring to, I put the link in, in into the event here, but it's but just to, for people watching on the web later, this is called Create Space. So createspace.com is what Angela's talking about there. And so that's a, a major resource that you depend on. 
Am I, am I right? Do you use that? You, do you use that regularly? That creates that's space? that's the one that I use now, and um, I think it's you know it's one of the easiest. It's very intuitive, and the fact that it's Amazon, so you know that they are really good at marketing books. That's what they do. They sell books and they sell them well, mm -hmm. and um, you know they do a lot of split testing and. And I found really good results with that. I actually did decided not to sell Getting Prepared directly off my website because I didn't want to worry about having it mess with the shipping and handling and order fulfillment stuff. Yeah, order fulfillment. I would not want to be doing order fulfillment. At there, all. There's just you know I have enough. I can barely get my kids in matching socks out the door to their soccer practices. If I had to. Yeah. No, just no. <laughs> Definitely for sure. So now there's another question here saying, is it better to start with an ebook rather than a printed one? And I think that's what we've been talking, we've been covering this whole concept a lot here. Um, and, but the way this question is worded is, is it better to start with an ebook rather than a printed one? And I think um, you can talk a little bit more about this, but I, I believe we've, we we really sort of covering that, that it's not even these days now that an ebook is a step towards traditional publishing anymore. It, it can be just the destination itself. Um, right. Guy Kawasaki I, is a big, obviously, I mean, you guys probably all know Guy Kawasaki has published so many books. He's a prolific author, and he's he is big now into self-publishing as well and a big advocate for it. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about your opinion on that? Well, I think, um, you know, it's tempting to just do the ebook. And unless you are only offering your book in a digital form, I would say don't look at it as two separate steps. Look at it as the same step. Because it's so easy to convert an ebook into a self published print on demand book. Um, you just have to have some awareness of the elements, the formatting. Um, and, and then, like I said, there's there's differences, and I didn't even know this until Becky did the advanced training in the course. Um, like I had no clue what all she did. I just knew that she did it, and it looked great, and that was good enough for me. Man, I didn't realize that there's actually differences in how you create the cover, whether it's going to be print uh, on the print book or the ebook version. Um, but the thing is, and here's what I've found. You know, I had uh, 30 days to make and sell a fabulous ebook. And it's up on Amazon as well as being sold, you know, directly through affiliates and, and on my website and that kind of thing. What I found is that I sell more digital versions of getting prepared, more of the e-versions, because I have the print version than if I only offered it as an e-book. There's something about having multiple versions. When you go to a book's page on Amazon and it says, do you want the Kindle or do you want the print? Or do you want the audiobook version? That instantly tells you, it puts that seed in your mind, this is a serious book. Yes. This, and and if if my book is, you know, $4.99 for the digital version, and then there's another ebook that's $3.99 or $4.99, similar price range, people are going to be more likely to buy mine because it has the print book, even though they're not buying the print book, they're still buying the digital version, they're still buying the ebook copy because I have the print version available. Um, to me, there's just, unless you're doing it like a newsletter freebie download thing, there's no reason not to offer it for print. A, you might sell one, and that would be awesome. B, it gives you something to take to book signings and feel special and put on your bookshelf. And C, you're more likely to sell the digital version because you have the print option available. And thank you so much for you know what I really was missing the point in her question. I was when I, it's so funny. I was still translating. Oh, that she's talking about an ebook and the printed versus to being self-publishing versus traditional. But that's not even what the essence of the question was. So I'm so glad you figured you you knew exactly what you meant. She meant, and and what we're talking about is that the ebook. So if you're thinking to yourself, and lots of times I make this mistake when I'm thinking self-publishing, I'm sort of thinking of it in the sense of it being an ebook. oh yeah, that there's the print-on-demand sort of option of it, and, but I'm not really thinking of it as it's still being that printed version. So it be, we have to not make the mistake that I just made and that I think we often make in that self-publishing sort of mostly means ebook. It doesn't. It means it, it means both, right? It, you can get yeah. the printed copy. And so when you're saying using create space and having that option to the printable. I absolutely agree. If I'm going to go buy something on Amazon and I see all three options, the audio, the print, and the digital, 
yeah, I may buy the digital, but you're right that the it it definitely makes you feel more confident purchasing it and making right. that purchase decision if you see that it was that it is a print book. So what you're saying is that the the step you have to take if you're writing it as an ebook, you still can have it as a print copy, but you're going to have to talk to a designer or something to help make sure it's laid out and formatted correctly right. for print. And then you're going to use a site like Create Space to Correct. have people print it on demand and have it fulfilled through Amazon. Is that right? Right, because the beauty with Create Space is you can upload that digital file to Create Space and say, this is what I want my you know print book to look like. Here's the cover for it. Um, it costs like, you know, I don't know, 10 bucks or something to get the proof sent to you. So they send you a printed copy for you to actually hold in your hands and look at and make sure that all of the, you know, photos line up correct and nothing's smooshed in the margins and the cover looks right. You know, so you've got a demo to look at. You have to buy the demo and that costs, you know, it's under 20 bucks with shipping and handling or whatever. And other than that expense of producing the, the creatives for, for it and the proof, it doesn't cost you anything to offer that print option. It's not like Amazon charges you rent. So they don't get money. They don't take any money from you until you sell one of the print books. And then it doesn't come from you. It comes from the sale price of the book. So they keep their part. They give you your part. And it's not costing you any money to have that option available. It doesn't cost you a thing. So why not? Like, yeah. So, <laughs> to me, it's a no-brainer. If you if you can go ahead and you know suck it up and work through those details of producing that formatting and having it ready to go, then it it makes so much sense to do that. Oh, absolutely. Now, I definitely I hear what you're saying. I completely agree. And you know you've lit this fire under me. I'm going to get Janice and I. It's so funny because Janice has been nagging me for years, like all since the beginning. I mean, we've been in this game blogging since 2006, right? And the yeah. whole time we've intended and wanted to publish and write books and stuff. But there is this gigantic learning curve. There's this leap. There's this unknown. And you're really taking and getting rid of that unknown and guiding people through this process. But I mean, like I said, it's been, what is that, eight years or something we've been in this crazy business? And we've yeah. never gotten any book published. But with a course like yours, taking it through, learning how to do things, like that big unknown of how do I right. take it from an ebook to a printed? And, and it feels... I mean, even though people could go out and learn and research on their own and find out and learn how to do it on their own, I mean, having someone hold your hand and guide you through the process is worth just anything. I mean, I know that's what I really needed. So now I'm so, you know, it's still hard to find time. And maybe we can talk about that here in a minute, um, about making the time and, and getting, the, getting the writing done. But absolutely, if you're going to invest that time in writing that book, get the print version option available through using Create right. on Amazon. You're going to create yeah. all that work, put all that investment in writing it, get it available on print. Yeah, it's it's really, and you know, the, the newest thing, and I, I was learning about this option as I was writing the course, um, is also audiobook. You know, yes. Amazon has a similar program as Create Space um, for their audiobooks. So either you can do the recording yourself, or, and it has to be really perfect, and I talk about this in the lesson, but you know, or you hire somebody to do the recording for you, or you do this like royalty share thing. Um, and the thing is, those author, those narrators are picky about who they work with. They're not going to work with just any book. It has to look professional. You, they have to feel like you know it has a good cover and it's going to sell well. They have to feel like oh, you're actually taking it seriously, and then they're going to be willing to invest their time because they're working for free up front and hoping to make the money back as the book sells. Mm -hmm. But audiobook royalties are as high as 50% wow. depending on your book sales, which is the largest cut out there. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal royalties. So it's something that I'm really investigating for books like Getting Prepared, where it would be easy to narrate and um, mm -hmm. offer yeah, no, that. I think, uh, to be honest, I'm a big user myself of audiobooks. Yeah. I, 
I, I use them all the time because I find I don't have the time to physically have a book in front of me very often um, when I'm not working or blogging, right? But I, yeah. I have lots of hours where I can multitask and be listening, like when I'm exercising, just even exactly. anything, like you can have it on while you're, you know, doing your dishes, doing your chores, listening, listening to an audiobook. So I'm a big user of audiobooks, and I, I think that's a great, a, a great um, idea to to get your book in audio. But again, that's a huge unknown that you're doing the research, you're doing that legwork, right? And figuring out how to do it, and then you're sharing that with your with with members of your team uh, of your program of your, of your of your course so that's fantastic so let's um jump a little bit over here into the concept of overcoming these barriers to writing a book i mean like i said it's been 8 years that i've been blogging Janice is constantly mad at us that I say mad at us. <laughs> you love it that Janice and I are kind of like one person. Anyway, <laughs> she's always saying we have to write a book, we have to get products, we have to write a book. And I'm always like, I know, but we don't have time. Like we're just, you know, we're in this rat race of blogging, mm -hmm. in that you're just putting out fires every day, getting that next post up, the next post up, next post up. And how do you overcome that barrier of finding the time to actually get this done? So that's a really good question. There's um, there's a couple different things that I think are barriers to people. One is the topic selection. If you don't have your topic narrowed down, then it's really hard to feel motivated to actually do it. If you don't know what you're working for, then half your time is stressed out thinking, okay, I should write something. I don't know what, but I should definitely write something now. And that's just a waste of time. So one of the first things that I have my students do is A, we choose a really good topic because that's one of the big mistakes that bloggers make when they're writing a book is choosing the wrong topic. So I spend a lot of time about this and um, really will even coach them through in the private Facebook group if they need help um, on their topic selection. Then we develop a table of contents. And um, this is not necessarily the same as what's going to go in the front of your book, but this is like a working outline. So you're using it to work off of. But once you have that written out, then it becomes a guide for you to constantly be making forward progress. And I keep mine taped up next to my computer, next to my work area. Um, I even have a copy like folded up in my purse so I can take it with me on the go. <laughs> and then, you know, it, I cannot tell you how motivating it is to be able to Sharpie marker out those subsections as I make progress on the big project. So table of contents is huge. Plus, you never sit down to a blank screen because when you sit down to write chapter 10, you just take the table of contents that you have for chapter 10, cut and paste it over there, and now you're already 50 words into the chapter. And you've got this whole thing and it tells you the first section is going to be about this. So now you sit down and you write about that and you fill in the section. And then you go to the next section and you write and you fill it in. And before you know it, boom, you have already started making progress. You never waste time sitting there thinking, what am I going to write now? Your table of contents tells you what to write now and helps keep you motivated. Now, in terms of finding time, which is the other big element, I mean, my goodness, I have five kids, so I totally get time constraints. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. One, I really like built-in accountability. Um, I schedule on my calendar writing sprints. And I will get together with um, one, two, ten other writers, and we'll all start writing. So we start writing at 3 o'clock, our timer is set for 3.45, and at the end of the time session, we report back our word count. So when you know that there's a dozen other people around the world who are also writing, and in 45 minutes, they're going to pop in the group, and they're going to be like, I wrote 857 words. You don't want to be the person who's like, um, I checked Facebook, and I went up a level on Candy Crush. Does that count? Like, you don't want to be the, the one. <laughs> so you kind of, it kind of keeps you motivated because it has to keep you motivated. The other thing that I've started doing as I felt my motivation flag is that I reward myself for small successes. So my personal word count goal is a thousand words every day. Rain or shine, no matter what, if I'm sick with the flu, I'll scrawl it on the <laughs> wall in the bathroom as I'm eating. Doesn't matter. A thousand words come out of my brain and into the world every single day, no matter what. 
So to make that easier for myself and avoid the midnight scramble to scrawl something in my journal before I roll over and collapse in exhaustion, I started doing half of them in the morning when I first get up. And so I play this game with myself where I'm not allowed to check Facebook until I've written my first 500 words. And I kind of like Facebook. I like my friends. <laughs> I have five kids, so anyone who knows my first name and actually uses it on a regular basis is awesome to me. And um, so, yeah, that's a motivation for me, and it keeps me motivated. The other thing I would say is once you know your topic of your book, you can start to match your blog content with your book content. So now you're just you're writing on the same topic, and you don't have to like switch gears. It's the same thing. Um, and I even with backyard farming, I started connecting and reaching out to um, companies and brands, and developing sponsored post relationships with them in light of the fact that the book was coming out. And so I even had sponsors for my book launch and had giveaways um, that were themed and sponsored. And I did a similar process with getting prepared. So I had, you know, like Berkey water filters and we did a giveaway um, with them on my blog. So it was a company that was thematically tied to the topic of the book. So I knew from a strategic perspective the readers that were coming to read those posts and enter those giveaways were people who were interested in the topic of my book. So therefore, they were potential people to buy my book and read it and be interested in that topic. And I didn't have to try to like mentally keep up with dog food and you know whatever deodorant and this uh, all of these other topics in addition to my book. Everything complemented the book and really helped me stay a lot more focused that way. That's such a great point. I really like that advice about developing those sponsored relationships that line up and make sense. I mean, you're going to be talking about water filters in your book. You're going to be talking about it on your blog. It makes sense to have a giveaway for your readers. And also, like you said, that's so smart about blogging about the same topic because then again, you're still you're growing on your blog your potential audience for purchasing your book too, right? right? The more you're blogging about it, the more you're becoming an expert on that topic, the more you're exactly. seen as an expert on the topic, and the more, again, it, it, your your um, book makes sense as a purchase and extension of your of your work. So that's really such a smart, a smart thing. And again, that comes right back into what you were talking about before, the importance of your topic selection. And I think, I know a, a struggle for Janice and myself is, um, we're so ADD, like, oh my gosh, Janice, we're so ADD, <laughs> honestly, and not just in a joking way, like, we totally, we actually, I think, are, like, not that we've ever really been medicated and talked technically, like, <laughs> diagnosed as ADD, right. but really, we are pretty ADD, so it's very hard because we are so passionate about this and about this, and it's like, I oh, know I want to write about this, I want to write about this, and, and I think as bloggers, we, um, in the blogging space, it's, it's it's a natural easy way to to be ADD, you know, and especially in a blog right. like Five Minutes for Mom, where we're talking about everything, you know, so we can exactly. be all ADD. We can be talking about photography here, talking about you know a recipe there, talking about um, keeping your kids safe online, all these different topics. And so Five Minutes for Mom, we have that challenge in that we are all over the place, and you know you're you're you have that benefit um, that with Android Housewife you you are already more targeted in that you talk a lot about these specifics that you brilliantly know how to get prepared and backyard farm and all these amazing skills that you have so you could really drill down into that so for bloggers like myself that are more generalized we have this really big challenge that you talked about before and that's so important of drilling down and finding your topic and when I was I was taking a look through some of your course materials I love that you had a couple of handouts there where you really help 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 your um, course members, your students, drill down into their life experiences and into right. um, to, to, to sort of mine in their own experience and, and, and figure out what their expertise lies in. Sometimes it's hard for us to even really recognize and take ourselves seriously as experts in a certain area, even though we are, you know. And so I love yeah. that you have those handouts and that, that you, you guide people through that process. 
You know, and I don't think that anybody has to be an expert. I certainly wouldn't claim to be an expert on backyard farming. There's lots of things that I'm still learning. And, you know, I put that right in the book. I grew up in the city. I was a city girl. I thought that, you know, chickens grew in the grocery store. And <laughs> I never saw a farm until we went on a field trip when I was growing up. And my mom took like 1,800 photos because it was a big deal. And then I met this country boy. and you know, he was insane, and <laughs> he knew all of this stuff that I didn't, and it, you know, it was fascinating to me, and so I put that journey into the book, and I said, this is what I'm learning, this is what I tried and messed up with, so don't do that, because it sucks, and <laughs> maybe try it this way instead, and I think that that's, you know, when you're honest with your readers, and you're honest with them, and you take them along on this adventure with you, and, you know, it's like my mantra now is embrace the journey, and that's, that's the core theme throughout all of this, whether it's a book about ebooks or a book about gardening. It's a journey that I'm taking my reader on. It's something that I'm helping them feel prepared for the next step. And that's the thing, like what I figured out is my core, my core thing is helping people who feel overwhelmed by whatever their next challenge is get through that place of overwhelm and create a plan so that they can move forward with confidence. That's my theme. And whether it's in gardening or having a baby or <laughs> writing an ebook, that's what I'm good at. And once I figured that out, you know, it can be as simple as you and Janice sitting down and saying, what are we good at? What do people get from us? When they come to our website, it's for what? What are they, what is that core essence? Forget the topic. What is that essence that they get from us? And then that's what you bring into your book. So that it's not generic mass market. Blah, just like everything else in the bookshelf where it looks like a cookie cutter. You guys are bringing your unique thing and your awesome special twist into it and now it's 100% five minutes for mom and people look at it and they know that's Janet, that's Susan. And that's they, awesome. I love they the become you, interested. I love the way you talk about that because confidence is a big, a big barrier that people have to overcome in taking that step to writing a book. Confidence is a huge factor. And so I love what you mentioned there, that you don't have to be a all-time expert. You can develop a certain amount of expertise in this process, this journey, and then be authentic. Authenticity is what everybody craves, especially these days. I mean, it's just, it's proven over and over and over that, that people want to see the authentic journey of someone who isn't touted as the world's leading expert in such yeah. and such in producing it. And I, th I think a great example of this, there's a two fabulous examples, I think, of, spa of, of spaces where they've been dominated in the past by the big, big, biggest experts, but now we see the change. And those two changes, were, I, I mean, spaces are, I really feel, in recipes, you know, in food, and in, in fitness is another great example. I think yeah. we see this, um, Pinterest proves this over and over and over again, that people want to read recipes from people who aren't the ultimate, ultimate, you know, all-time world chef. They want to see a mom like themselves trying out, testing out a recipe and taking the real photo of it and putting it out there and telling the real story about making it. And that's what people are clicking on, that's what people are repinning and it proves people want that authentic journey from someone they can relate to. And another great example I can say is the whole fitness world. We see this over and over with um, people sharing their weight loss journey. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you say, they want to learn from someone that started at a place that they were at and then evolved and changed. And again, it's like you say, it's that it's having that person one step ahead of you, holding your hand and guiding you through their journey. And that is a way, I think, a way more welcoming place to learn from someone. I know I feel way more comfortable taking like taking that virtual hand of someone who's just a few steps ahead of me, kind of, and saying, here, come along on this process. I started where you were at. Now I've gotten for, uh, up to here, and I'm going to take you through that process. Not someone that feels like we can't relate to them, like they've been in perfect physical shape and been a physical trainer <laughs> since they were a toddler. You know what I right. mean? They were born right. ripped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But to see that process, I think that's two spaces that we, like I say, that those two are just, I think, examples 
that prove right. that that readers want to go on those authentic journeys of someone they can relate to and someone they can learn from. So I love that. And so confidence, um, you have to fi find confidence in yourself by, um, you know, finding topics that, that that you are passionate about, that you have expert yeah. some expertise in. But they, like, there's a difference between, you know, expertise and then what we think of as being an expert. I think right. lots of times people get so thrown off by, well, I'm not an expert. But like you, so you might even say, well, I'm not an expert in backyard farming, but you have developed expertise. That's right. Right? Yes. And there's, you know, and there's things that I've learned in research and, you know, it, it, it all comes back to that breaking it down for people, being able to share with them, you know, don't be overwhelmed, try this, and if it doesn't work, try this, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it, we can do this, and, and it's, you know, to me, half of it is having that ability to encourage people um, or entertain them, which I think is where you and Janice really excel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and okay, so we just had a question pop in from the audience. So I just want yes. to, um, I just want to re read that one. Now that this question here comes back, we we talked about this very briefly before, and she says she is a food blogger, but this is from Chris. She says, I'm a food blogger, but I really want to write a novel. Do you have any advice for would-be novelists? Is your advice for nonfiction the same as for fiction? So we mentioned that briefly before, but maybe delve a little bit more into that. Yeah, so self-publishing to me is where fiction can really um, be super exciting. Um, it A, you don't rely on photography as much, so the only full cover photos are in your cover art. Um, so the production of your book is easier than say a photographer, a photography blogger is going to have a lot more trouble <laughs> doing a print on demand just because of the cost of publishing. Um, the other thing that is really exciting to me is that fiction allows the reader to connect with the author. And I think that, you know, um, or self-publishing, when, when, when you write a book, when you read a book, you feel connected with the author. I, you know, how many times have you read an amazing book, you couldn't get it out of your head, and the next day you go to Google and you Google them. And you can't necessarily find them, like up pops Penguin Publishing. Well, you don't want to connect with Penguin. You want to connect with the author. And um, definitely that is the same with fiction as with nonfiction. I actually was just, we did an advanced training for my students with Tim Grawl, who is the um, founder of a book publicity group called Outthink. And he works with like best-selling authors like Hugh Howey, who's a self-published fiction writer, um, Pamela Slim, Dan Pink, all of those kinds of people. Very, very awesome guy. And I asked him, you know, is, is this different? Is this a different process for fiction than nonfiction? And he said, not at the core and not at the technical side of things. The technique is still the same. So whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, you are presenting part of yourself to the world, right? You're presenting this story, you're sharing your experiences, and ultimately it comes down to the same. You want to connect with that reader and get permission to stay in contact with them. So you're getting them to subscribe to you. You're getting them to sign up for a newsletter so you can send them updates, and you're sharing your book journey with them. Fiction, self-published fiction is awesome because you can produce your books so much faster. Now you're not writing a novel a month or a novel a year. I have a friend who writes a novel a month. She constantly writes and as soon as she puts, as soon as she turns her manuscript over to her editor, she's working on the next book in the series. She has fans that have been with her for the last two years and they buy every book she ever writes because they are so enthusiastic about her. You know, at best, uh, a traditionally printed novelist is able to move about one book a year and that's pushing it. It used to be um, further spaced out than that. The publishing houses are figuring out that self-published authors are moving faster than they are and they're trying to speed up that cycle but it's it's never going to be more than once a year. And to me, um, you know, if your point of writing is to connect with your readers then self-publishing is the way to go. Now. Um, I will say that not every 
writer is able to make the transition to that kind of business mindset of producing your own book. And if you are the type of person who you just want to write the pretty words and six months later open a cardboard box and there are your books like magic, poof, they just magically appeared, then do not self-publish because you, you have to think about those things. And not every writer wants to think about those things. Um, it's kind of like the difference between being a contributor on a blog and owning your own blog. Because when you own your own, you have to update the WordPress. You have to install the plugins. You have to kind of know a little bit about those details and think about them. And if you don't want to, then don't. Go right, you know, there's lots of websites where you can contribute and never have to touch that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think we're entering this stage now where for authors, we also have those same kind of choices. Just like writers online, they can write for someone else. They can do their own thing. They can do both at the same time. And that's really exciting. And to me, to be in this time in history where we have the option to just decide, I want to write a book and then make something that's so amazing that I can go on the news and the reporters can't tell which one is which, that's amazing. Like, that totally blows my mind. I get to write a book and people are actually going to read it? Are you kidding me? This is awesome. I can't believe they let me do this. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that we live in an age where if that's what you want to do, do it. I love that. You're so you're so right. We're in this uh, the age of possibility, of options, mm. and where we're taking out all these middlemen in all these different processes. And with blogging, that was, you know, it's, eight years ago when we started, this whole concept of self-publishing wasn't at the stage it's at right now. You know, it, there weren't all yet Kindle and all this stuff at and the um, the Create Space sites, all of this to make it as simple as it is now. And we've so you really want to take advantage of where technology, where the process is at, and that people are forging ahead and making that path for us. So and when we see authors like Guy Kawasaki, who have the option, obviously, he I mean he's published zillions of books traditionally and when he's saying okay now I'm self publishing this book uh, that's that you know that that's really helping put um, you know put away any stigma against self publishing and really um, helping people understand that there's reasons uh, that there's reasons to make this decision this way now I love what you also pointed out there that the thing with self publishing is you have to have that business sort of mind a bit about this. You have to do some of the stuff that might be a bit icky for you, you know. And 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 I like also what you said there about the difference between being it's like being a contributor at a blog or um, working for someone that's running a business versus being the business owner or being the blog. Center. Right. I mean, at running five minutes for mom is such a stress. I mean, I love it. I love what I do, but oh my gosh, it's so hard. It's so hard being everything. And That's being, right. uh, being a business owner and an entrepreneur in this space, we have to do everything. You know, we have to be the salesperson and the marketer and the you know, and the technical person and the manager and the this and the that when you're running a space. And so what what you're saying there is that when you're going to self-publish, you got to take on some of the processes that might not be your favorite part of them. So there's a difference between if you're willing to say, okay, that's not my favorite part of the process, but I can still learn how and do it. Or right. if you're going to just be like, no, bottom line, I'm not doing that. Then you have to go traditional. I would, yeah, I would recommend it. And I, I have a lesson in my course where I literally say, like, if, if this is you, then ask for a refund right now. Um, I, and it's like lesson three because, you know, it's like who should not self-publish a book? These yes. are the people who should not self-publish a book. And it's one thing to say, like, this is the area where I'm going to have to stay the most focused. I'm not a super detailed person. So I kind of overcompensate in that area because I know that that's where I'm weak. Now, where I'm Excel is talking about what's going on and sharing that with people and doing the guest posts, and I love the like actual connecting with people part. So once I can <clears throat> keep that motivation in mind, it helps me get through those more challenging aspects, like going through the third round of edits. Are you kidding me? Aren't we done with this book yet? <laughs> so it's easy to get to that place, and, and you know, I actually. Um, one of the advanced trainings that I brought in was somebody who's not an author. She's actually my mother. 
She is one of the most savvy business women I've ever met, ever in my entire life. Um, she literally took a direct sale, like home-based business, like similar to Avon kind of thing, and built it into a multinational, like $5 million group. So she knows what she's talking about. And she also understands those kind of like not fun details that go into building business. And I had her come and she did a training on discovering your why. And once you start figuring out like why why is this important? Why why do I want to write a book? What are those benefits? Like what will I gain from doing it? And what will I lose if I don't? And once you write that down, and she had a great suggestion because she said, you know, find your whys, create a visual representation of them, whether it's a photograph or a collage or whatever and put them, put that photo on your phone, next to your computer, in your bathroom on the mirror, and on the fridge. Four places where you will guaranteed see them multiple times a day. Because it's hard to waste time when you see that thing in front of you. And you know, you know, if this book does well, I'm going to be able to send my kids to summer camp next year. And you see the picture of the summer camp trees on your phone. Well, now you're not going to get on there and play wasteful games. You're going to go and check in with your editor and get an ETA on when those book edits are going to be done or whatever it is that next step that you need to do. And I think that once we start to understand, like, you're not just going through the stress of five minutes for mom and running that just because you want to torture yourself. <laughs> you're doing that for a reason. There's a reason. And that reason makes any of the kind of difficult moments and those difficult moments are temporary, and they're smaller than the reason why you chose to do this. I, I want to highlight what you said there. I love about, I've, I mean, I've learned so much before about this concept of finding your why and putting the picture up. And, you know, I've, I've heard that a lot, and many people have heard that a lot. But I like the example that you used there of something really tangible and almost a, almost a small sort of result. Like, I publish this book and my kids go to this summer camp. Sometimes right. when I think, oh, of my why, I think it too big. And then mm -hmm. if you think too lofty of, oh, well, I want to be able to do this, blah, 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 then it's not, then it almost defeats you. It almost right. is too overwhelming. I'll never reach that goal. It's so far out there. But if you make a tangible little goal almost, it, it seems more achievable. Well, it's the same as, you know, creating your to-do list. When you sit down the night before and say, what am I going to do tomorrow? You don't say, I'm going to write my book tomorrow because you can't write a whole book in a day. Um, you know, <laughs> like yeah. you can't physically write that many words in one day. So what can you do? Well, tomorrow I'm going to write a thousand words. That's what you can do. Yeah. And so that's what you write down and that's what you accomplish. You're creating this system of small successes that carries you through into a larger achievement. And I think that's really um, the key to staying motivated throughout the entire process. You know, how do, we, how do we stay motivated to write a blog? You know, we write one post and someone leaves a great comment, that automatically energizes us to write another post. You know, we're not thinking, I want to write a blog and it's going to be 10,000 posts and I'm going to have a page rank of four and I'm going to have 100,000, you know, like we don't set out to do that in a day. We set out to write one blog post and we share it on Facebook and we go and we tweet it and you know whatever so breaking that process down into the small achievable bites that's the key I, I love that that's so 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 right on that and I'm telling you Angela just listening to you talk is such therapy and <laughs> and, and, and it's just I feel so like I want to tell everybody take this course and because it's just so authentically, you have so it's such a gift of teaching. You obviously do. You've gone through so much and learned, obviously you've learned from your mother as well, like your whole life <laughs> about how to be this, um, this process-minded, business-minded woman and get stuff done. Obviously, I mean, you've had a whole lifetime of that business training in a way, like you really have. Yeah. And, and then you've got all this experience of having written these books. I mean, just such a wealth. And then, and then all your coaching experience of watching and helping and guiding individuals through and then seeing mm -hmm. their individual problems and their individual challenges, helping them overcome that. I mean, the, the expertise you have developed in this area is 
phenomenal. And I am so excited to, you know, to have this, this, have you guiding me through? I'm gonna just. I gotta get this done. I gotta. I gotta do this. Like, That's I've been right. putting this. I've been putting this off for so many years. I gotta get this done. And and I feel like you are definitely the person to guide me through this process and and to guide so many of us through. So like you said, your course isn't for everybody. Your course isn't necessarily for people that want to just snap their fingers and have a book done. I mean, it's not gonna happen, right? This is a process, and it, this is a commitment to your, you know, to your it, yourself and your your um your schedule and everything. That if you want to get to this massively exciting end goal of having written and published your book, it's going to be a process. It's going to be an investment in your, you know, in your time and everything. Um, but you've really laid out a path that we can take and and journey with you. Oh yeah, I mean, I took six years of learning the hard way, yes, <laughs> and you know, and six years of producing multiple titles, both as like the classic PDF download ebook kind of thing, all the way through to you know a major 400 page. It was like 432 pages, traditionally printed book with you know one of the top publishing houses in the nation. So I I have this gamut of experience to bring and say, okay, you know, here's what worked well with this, here's what we can learn from this experience. And instead of somebody having to like blunder their way through, I'm kind of, you know, the course is set up with five lessons per week over a six week, you know, segment or length of time. I have people who are doing like one a day, so they're going to be done in a month. I have people who are doing two or three weeks, so it's going to take them a couple of months. Whatever is going to work for your schedule, that's fine. The material is there. You get lifetime access. I'm never going to like take it away from you um, because you know I, I feel like you know as a mom of five, like if my kids got chicken pox, I probably wouldn't write a thousand words a day. You know, I would just have to push pause on some of those extra things. So you just you never know what's going to happen in someone's life, and I don't want to penalize someone for having a life. <laughs> I just would never do that. So um, yeah, you know, I have it designed to really work with people's schedules. All of the lessons are available in written format. They're also available in video and audio downloads, so people can just download the audio files if they want to, you know, listen to it on the commute, and then just kind of download the handouts when they get home in the evening. Whatever. Um, I, I did, you know, take that extra expense of doing all of those production elements. And the other thing that I did with this um, course that I wasn't necessarily able to do with the ebook is to bring in a lot of expert guests. So people like Tim Grawl, people like my mom, people like Becky Bain, and my editor's going to come and do a, you know, preparing your manuscript for editing, so that you're not paying extra hours that are wasted time that you could have fixed yourself pretty easily. So she's going to do a whole course on that, and then I have. Um, you know, discounted resources. I also have free resources um, or discounts that I've worked out with them. So, like my editor is giving a 25% off discount. My graphic designer is giving the discount. Um, and the other thing that I did is I offered extra materials. So you get the ebook to use as a workbook if you want to print that out and use that as a workbook. The other thing that I did was include an ebook on that I wrote a long time ago on how to produce, like how to pitch magazine articles and actually query print magazines as well. And, you know, I tested this out with Backyard Farming to see if it was still relevant and if it would still work and that kind of thing. And, you know, I just launched this book, so I wanted to do these magazine articles to promote the book. Um, just in the spring and summer, after the book came out in December of 2012, so just in the spring and summer last year, I was able to sell enough print magazine articles to like pay for the cost of the course three times over. Wow. Um, you know, I was literally getting paid to promote my book in national magazines. And that to me is, you know, most of the courses that are out there, it's either like how to write, but it doesn't tell you how to produce a book, where it's like make a million dollars on Kindle, kind of like spammy, churn out junk content, and you don't end up with a product that you feel good about. Or it's like how to market your book, and it assumes that you've already written one. So it's like, you know, it's all of these different pieces that, you know, I mean, I literally have taken a half dozen different courses, and it's all of these different elements. And what I've tried to do is just create one place, one format, one, you know, mm -hmm. one place for people to get all of the information from start to finish, all the way from picking your topic 
and making your table of contents to like how to take your book on air and get news segments. So it's literally all the way through to as advanced as you can get on the marketing stuff. It is honestly, I'm so impressed. And 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 like I said, I've had the chance to preview it. I you know looked at the the layout and the volume of information that you've that you've put in there. It's yeah. and like you say, across the whole process, I sincerely just really um, am excited for everybody <laughs> that takes the course. I'm really excited for them because this is going to propel them forward in a way that uh, that that's unimaginable in a way. It, like honestly, I can't even. I can, I'm so impressed. With it's what the biggest thing I've ever done. Yeah, it, it, it's I could have I could have written two books in the time it took me to make this course. Honestly, that's when when I was looking through this, I was like, wow, you have invested so much of yourself in this yeah. product and what you've put together for people. I can see that you've just really personally invested and given everything you've got into this product. So I'm really excited for people. So if you can find out more about okay. it. I've created an easy link, a pretty link for people to go. You can just go to 5minutesfromom.com slash Ange England. You know, your handle that you're all over the place, Angela's handle that she's everywhere you find right. her is A-N-G England, Ange England. So you just can go to 5 com slash Ange England and that'll link you, that'll pretty link you over to um, to your product. Now we are affiliates okay. for it, we're helping promote as affiliates, so um, that is our affiliate link, so we appreciate you clicking through on our affiliate link, every little bit helps for those of us running, you know, running blogs ourselves, <laughs> so we appreciate the opportunity to be affiliates, and, um, but hopefully that little pretty link is a nice easy way for you to find it, so just go to 5 com slash Ange England, all one word, A-N-G-E-N-G-L-A-N-D, Ange England, and you should click through and find this course. And like I said, I'm excited for you, as a, for every person at, that Thanks. clicks through and finds that. I'm excited for them. I'm excited for you, Angela, for um, this journey that, that you're going to be able to watch all these people reach these goals, and I know that that's going to be so personally satisfying for you because you've yeah, invested yeah. yourself so much into this course and to, to see that come to fruition, I can't talk, to fruition, and um, <laughs> in, in all those people's successes, I know that's going to be really great for, for you as well. I'm excited because I know I'm going to go through this program and, um, and get a book at the end of it. So watch yes. me, and you can, you ever, ever all my read all, you know, all of you guys out there can be nagging at me and saying, How's your book coming? How's your book coming? <laughs> you know, that's right. Janice and I got to get this done. We're gonna, we're gonna, we do everything together. So we'll probably do some whatever we're gonna write. We might probably write it together, and and go through this process. All right, we've gone a bit over our hour, uh, so we're gonna wrap up. Um, but thank you so much, Angela. Thank you all of you for watching this. Thank you for joining us at 5minutesformom.com. Again, this has been one of our Work at Home Mom Strategy Hours. We're going to try to aim to run these about once a month. Uh, we were running them every two weeks, but I'm so busy and i got to write a book. So, um, <laughs> I gotta write a book, so I'm gonna try to do these yes. about once a month and bring in uh, expert guests like Angela, where you can really learn a lot and propel your your own business forward. So again, go to five minutesmom.com slash Ange England, and I'll see you on the inside as we're trying to as we're not trying to as we're moving forward. That's right, and writing our books. Try not, only do. Yes, there is no try. There is only do. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Angela. Bye. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you over in Angela's course.